terms of we're um, that we are holding off on that. And in the meantime, we're also revisiting how we are paying for content and the rules and ambiguities around it. And so for now, in terms of if we're contracting out for more, we're gonna hold off on contracting out for any more live coverage until that gets kind of settled. And Got it. Thanks for that context. Sure, okay. Thank, um, and thank you, Jen, for facilitating that. Um, so the Nero Dear Orca Media Board of Directors, I would like to thank you for your service to community television. I've been a viewer, a covered school and select board member and a contributor. It is a wonderful way to give people a voice and allow people to stay engaged and informed with their community. I have been providing local sports coverage to Adelphia Access, then Orca Media, since the mid 1990s when Kendrick Kite was the executive director. The feedback from community members that enjoy watching high school and other sports on local cable has always been motivational. Technology and my technological understanding has now allowed me to be able to live stream local high school sports. I use software that allows me to have titles, graphics, a scoreboard, clock, and even instant replay of exciting plays. I can also run video sports for underwriters, video spots for underwriters. I currently provide CVTV live sports coverage. I would love to work with Orca to provide live local high school sports coverage as well. Montpelier High School sports include soccer and basketball, including soccer and basketball are very strong this year. I have heard many fans that want more coverage. I know Orca is still in search of a new executive director to replace Rob Chapman. I am hoping the board might support me and the possible live local high school sports coverage. I am always free to discuss options and capabilities. Thank you for your service to our community. Sincerely, Carl Martin, P-A-R-T-O-N. First name is Harold? Carl. Carl. Carl of cbsports.net. So yeah, that, I, think, okay. just, I think that um, mm -hmm. what it feels like the appropriate thing would maybe for us to, uh, to continue that conversation with Carl. And if you, you yeah. know, if you would yeah. like to respond as, as a board or maybe we can take- It's the issue business. that he's um, a contractor as opposed to an employee. Cause we all kind of know the value of like, you know, high school graduations yeah. and sports and- mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that that's what it is. Is that it was that he is set up as like essentially like an independent contractor, um, right? Is that is that correct? He is an independent. Contractor. Which opens the door to another community producer, perhaps saying, "Why can't I get the same yeah. deal?" Yeah, yeah. And I think that you know, obviously, there is some. Um, yeah, he's definitely bringing a value to covering sports, but you know, I, I also think that. It's something that needs to be looked at in general, and whether you know, how we, you know, if we want to do sports coverage in house, or if we want to partner with the schools themselves to have uh, some kind of sports coverage. And you know, I, I do think that what he's doing is providing a value to the community. Um, and this is a company, you know, essentially he's set up as a, a for profit, right? And he has uh, contracts with the school, is my understanding, and then underwriters. I don't want to belabor the point. Yeah, as an old jock. I knew that films were either a blessing or a curse right. after the football game if you miss the block and the guy scores. So I don't know whether he's doing this in conjunction with sports teams and actually filming things that would help them right. review what happened and didn't happen in the soccer game. And that might be a part of his income or part of what he's trying to do. So my understanding, I think part of the sports that he does cover, so he doesn't cover Montpelier High School. I think they contract out with a different group that might be doing that. So our, and part of our reluctance maybe to be full-fledged with him is that the, the sports fits that he was, it would be like Spalding versus, they were maybe versus Montpelier. So in terms of our service area, he wasn't, there weren't a lot of sports team that was using him. So it's like, in terms of you know, whether it's reaching out to the schools and trying to get it, I think Randolph started to do more of their own and it was like, oh, well, let's grab it and it's, it doesn't cost anything and it's in our service area. So in terms of the value that we were experiencing, it's probably not as much as it could have been just because whether the other schools have, I think there's a lot of sports coverage contracting type, like that maybe does more mm -hmm. of like, so you could look at your film kind of thing yeah. versus 
what Carl was doing. So I think in terms of that, and also like we're like, if we lost it, like the amount that we were getting and what was getting covered wasn't like this huge, like we wouldn't necessarily feel it. I have a few questions and comments. I mean, so how much was he charging for the service? So I Jim believe it was like, I want to say 200 a month for, and then that was like for two, I think like two shows or like for the month. So, so would it was, you say it's like sending some camera operators to cover a sports event? Yes. To it, that? it would be similar. I think it might be a little bit more. Yeah. Because yeah, it's replay. Little and, value. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Um, and there wasn't really, I don't think we'd have to look there wasn't necessarily like a contract that like yeah, it's a guaranteed yeah. like oh, number yeah. of programs that he's and, giving us yeah. and that's fine i just wanted to get a sense of how much he was charging for the service yeah. and 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 the area he was covering which you answered he's not covering montpelier randolph has the high school has the tech center has that new film program which mm -hmm. probably does a lot of stuff and they probably have that set up and if you're running for them because we've always struggled with randolph Right. Yeah. Wanting sports covered, but we cannot do it because to, honestly, it's a hard thing to do. Oh, for sure. Like if somebody offers their service to cover that, you know, it requires a person with at least two or three cameras yeah. and, and tech no, know-how yeah. and all that. Um, but he's not covering Montpelier. Yeah. He's covering Spalding, which is technically not. Yeah. So I think he does. Like I think Barry also pitches into his contracting fees, and maybe that's also what like the yeah. Spalding. So, does he pick up um, U32 or uh, Waterbury High School? I think maybe we just need to have a conversation with him and kind of figure out what, you know, the expectations are, you know, and, and yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not that we're not saying that, you know, it's, it's black and white, we're going to cut him off. And, yeah, you know, and his letter that, doesn't yeah. sound like, you know, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of like, we need to be clear what's, what this yeah. means for Orca going forward. Sure. Too, but, that, and it is weird because it's his own gear. So he's like he doesn't work for Orca because right. otherwise he would be using Orca gear. Right? Yeah. Um, I have yeah. a question when there's a uh, this is CJ. You're, yep, you're coming through. Okay, great. Um, how many other sports events does Orca cover? Sorry about the thumb over the, story, the screen there. You know, we don't, we don't typically do sports. I mean, it's, yeah, we have a pretty, yeah. So yeah. Close to zero, was, yeah. Zach, was there a time where we captured the Mountaineers for a little bit? I think Ring maybe. Some kind of bell. Yeah, that does. Okay. May do it. So, there's sports. Um, I mean, there could be an argument if did other sports, we, you know, pay for somebody to go and be a camera person. But if we're not doing other sports, then we're carrying some content for a guy and providing him free exposure, um, so, you know, for an uncertain audience. And it seems like we're providing him a benefit just by carrying his content. Um, but we're, we're being inconsistent. So my, based on what you've said, I would, um, if I understand the, the team's thought in bringing the letter to the board, it's to, you know, what is, what is the team's recommendation? Is it to say we need to have a policy on whether we're paying for costs or not? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the question for us. I think it's a, I think it's right. a good thing that and what it, what it is, how are we going to go about the, doing these things, yeah. right? And this is our service territory. Right? And I say, I you know, I think we are the ones that should decide when we contract out versus, right? Yeah. Versus <clears throat> having somebody routinely do that, right? Those services. And the fact that he's not covering Montpelier per se, because Montpelier is covered by, doesn't really mean, you know, we don't have that much use for his services at this right. moment, right? Now, does... Does the con does do the games end up on our um, YouTube page or our website or that's fully proprietary? So, yeah, that's we just show it. Yeah, we just live stream it that one time. And we don't actually live stream it because it's the schedule is a little bit hard because it's not a set. So every Friday night on the education channel, we have game of the week. You do okay. And so depending, yeah, so we, if we have something from him. I'll play it sometimes. Like BMX had 
a soccer show or game that I pulled. And so I played that. Okay. And so so it's, there's a standing slot. There's a standing slot. It's just Friday night. And then um, because and then because the live streams are a little bit um, like not a set time and it depended on the schools. And so there wasn't like I couldn't regularly schedule it. So it'd be like <clears throat> interrupting whatever was playing currently to be able to do the live streams on the Ed channel. We wanted to do a stream on the channel. Thank okay. you. Um, and this is this does not need yeah. to become an action item. It's no, a public comment, and we're just taking in information. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we can still we could always he could still give us stuff, and we'll have to play it. I think that's what we're also kind of leaning towards too. I mean, if we were treating, it's kind of like we just need to, you know, have a conversation with him, and you know, and and also I think in, internally figure out where if, if we do pay yeah. for content when is that happening yeah. is it because right. we do find <clears throat> value in him having this production criteria correct which is so. a rental fee of equipment yeah right now. exactly the other the last thing i, I want to say about this is have you talked to the um, high school Montpelier high school sports director what are they well i think that's a part of that conversation that right. like we need to also do some information gathering and like yeah. talk to you okay. 32 i know michael and i have talked about like there could be some interest you know with students covering their own sports or you know yeah so i think we, we also need to get an up-to-date kind of regional okay. information gathering yeah. and, and talk to him and yeah and, and it doesn't mean that we can't maybe come up with some agreement with him that maybe we do pay per program instead of a monthly fee or something yeah. you know like there could be something and that yeah. we clearly you know know what we're going to get and the expectations are clear here so yeah and potentially is he interested in in helping teach Kids right, it is and replicable. Like, this, yeah, exactly. This, yeah. this is maybe a, something, a growth opportunity. Yeah. CJ's got her hand up here, so. Yeah, yep, thank CJ. you. Um, my is this. Um, would it, uh, it, there's a, all right, so we're carrying some games. Um, if the town came to us and said, hey, would you carry our high school sport? Would that fall under a uh, career where we would, feel obligated to send out a camera person to cover it i mean we could we could somebody could very well request event coverage for a high school sport and we could take it from there and you know that's it just hasn't it's, necessarily okay. happened well and it's also content we kind of know there people like it's you know the community cares about high schools yeah i, I yeah. think that yeah have you had I, event coverage requests for sports not for sports but i know they're pretty like protective of the content when it comes to sports interesting yeah, so yeah. mom principals association guidelines or something yeah I mean, right i know so i think that this is just we kind of dig a in a little thing that we need to, and yeah. this has also been a conversation that you know sports and sports coverage in general has been a kind of an active conversation on the van slack so i think that like you know maybe okay. kind of looking at what other amos are doing would be a good idea as well um, i want to ask jen uh, yeah. when you do fill a slot on friday night um what happens to it after you show it um it gets it actually doesn't get archived because it's not our content so right. i just play it and then as i run okay, out of space on the, it was, it was yeah so i don't archive <clears throat> it although it's on youtube and then but in terms of like an official archive because it wasn't ours i guess no, no, I, I, i'm not yeah. asking I, I, no I no was i was yeah, yeah that's where i kind of but yeah. i licensing it do we license other things we don't not even at a national at the national level like things we don't have national programming so we have i mean we have like free speech that we play but we don't that gets streamed live um we have outside of vmx i try not to really unless someone has requested that we carry it or we play it the local person requested, yeah yeah but normally if because of our annual report i try to leave it us created and then it, the vermont access so that it's not so much outside of that do we so pay for democracy now we don't pay yeah. for because it's we asked to stream it so it's just part of it but in terms of um it's yeah just i think in tom hartman is the other yeah about laura flanders and like i brought a video series over called astronomy for everyone and that's a you know a series that's professionally produced and they were just happy that we were carrying their content um because we're providing the uh you know, a, a, an avenue for people to find the content. Um, my thought is that it's, it's in, you know, I'd be interested in hearing 
these recommendations, but my thought is that this seems inconsistent, but that it also is an opportunity. Could we send, in addition to looking at what the other AMOs are doing, could we send a letter to the select boards in our towns or their city councils in the case of Montpelier and say, um, this is an opportunity for you. Would you like, uh, you know, would you like to carry your local theme sports? And would you to request an allocation of funding at the town meeting you know, to be put on the budget? And create an actual agreement and obligation. After we find enough about it. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or would it yeah. be school boards or, right, yeah, figuring that out. Yeah. That makes some sense. All right. Oh, yeah, good point. Maybe it's the outreach just to the school boards. You're right. Good call. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, it's something that needs further research and we can get to a place where we've got to balance Do you want to criteria. accept this or uh, take it into your documents or should I hang on to it? Um, uh, it's addressed to us, so I, I, okay. I can hold it. I don't know if I, I mean, this conversation could spice as a response. Maybe we yeah. can summarize the conversation. You could make a comment or copy to append to the minutes for tonight so that we could yeah. copy. Yeah. So I did, there's a PDF on the Google Drive for the board. So I did scan it so it's easily found. Okay, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. good. Thank okay. you. I just, uh, you know, I wrote a little bit kind of an overview, but I did I did gather more information from the select board, school boards, and schools. Right? Yeah. yeah. Are we on closed caption? I may be able to grab some verbiage from our conversation and just share that with them. I don't think we are. Or could we be after we? Play? Yeah, if maybe it also it's let like him know that we're going to, you know, we're, yeah, we're just looking steps. at what yep. this, you know, oh, what yeah. this yeah. means yeah. and how to go forward. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, that looks like public comment for us. And we have a double here on who of the minutes. Um, April 23rd, 2022 is. Um, Second in the packet, we probably ought to start with it chronologically backwards, right? Then we we'll, we'll found April 26. There's an extra copy of if the agenda is all here on the table. I was Dave, Connor, Michael, Chad, Urban, Rachel, you, myself, CJ, Sue, and Rob. This was Rob's last meeting. We're going to want to take a minute and just do a scan and we'll look for um, any fixes we might need. <clears throat> that, that'll that be June. If you go in smaller font is the second. Um, we do April 1st. All right, so this is April 26th. I'm to mess people up, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. Call order 632. I found uh, a single, single John Block's last name with an H C H. -E -E that's that's it. It shows up twice. Mm -hmm. I have any anyone find anything else that would need amending mm -hmm. to get this uh, these minutes all the way up to speed. I'm just going to add that I think that's a great idea. I I haven't heard that until reading this here that. To do a John Block Award at the yeah, annual we, we've meeting. We've been talking yeah. about this for a long time. Yeah. It's like a more like a scholarship we were thinking back then. I don't know mm -hmm. if we changed yeah. it to a award, but kind of scholarship for somebody pursuing um, yeah. journalism, media journalism, something, you know, That's multiple media, something yeah. like that, or even editing, you know, but yeah. Or somebody who's made an important movie. Yeah. With I mean, I was even thinking it, it might yeah. be, we don't have, I know Bradley <clears throat> does this, we don't have like community producer awards and like, you know, you think of like yeah. the amount of stuff Larry has done and with his show, I mean, like that would, I, it's kind of like the first person I think of, it would be nice to like recognize that as yeah. an award or something. Yes. And he's definitely got a social justice mindset. So, cool. Well, yeah, that's something to think about. Good. For our in, in terms of the minutes themselves, do people see other uh, fixes? 
And if not, I can entertain a motion to accept. I move that we accept the minutes as we have them. Uh, April 26 second, and Carlos seconds. I shall call the question. All those in favor of accepting the April uh, minutes, aye. please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? And we're unanimous and we're moving lightning fast to the June 28th minutes. <laughs> And uh, this is the larger hey, one. Mike, sorry, properly, I should probably abstain. Fair enough. Thanks. Thank you. Um, behind the wheel, right? Driving while reading. Um, so let us enjoy uh, reminiscing on uh, June 28th and see if we've got uh, minutes that need any amendment or ready to go. Oh yeah, this was my work. It's really choppy, but just catching some phrases. Huh? <clears throat> All right, so remind me, Christopher, how to say Virsima. Um Virsima. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> So can you ask questions? Yeah, I think I, I do. I do have some phrases that may be unclear and they just may need to be turned into full sentences. Well, it's not, it's not, an, I'm not questioning the, the minutes. I'm just asking information of the minutes. Don't left me hanging a little bit with, which is when you're a nonprofit sponsor for the Montpelier Pride Fest, do you have any sense at all of how that sponsorship and what happened at the Pride Fest are important enough for the board to know. I didn't attend any Pride Fest. Right, right. Yeah, so I didn't at all. And I'm glad we were a nonprofit sponsor. I just didn't know if there's anything like quick summary of how the Pride Fest itself went, whether there was enough money for all the things that needed to happen. By rights, a conversation like that ought to be an old business. Because sure. right now we're just approving right, minutes, fine. and that happens all the time. Okay, good. I'm when sorry. you're doing the old minutes, it jogs your memory for like the content of the old minutes. But I'm going to say, yeah, can we put that under old business? To put it off. I will. I'll, I'll make a note that we'll bring that. That's we have an old business um, piece report out on the pride um, sponsorship. Okay, now back to the matter at hand. Um, fixes for the minutes. People see things that need work. For uh, we'll entertain a motion. I think I got Nathan Souter's name right. One T. Um, I think so. Yeah, that's right. I didn't capitalize the little field. I'll move to approve with those minor edits that you're catching over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel has moved to accept the minutes of uh, June 28th with um, minor edits. Do we have a seconding? I'm going to second again. Thank you, Carlos. You're trying to be I'm trying to share the wealth, but I'm trying to. You're also trying to move the meeting along. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor of accepting June 28, 2022 meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And any abstentions? Yes. See, Jess. Um, uh, it does look like the eyes have it. All right. Thank you, folks. We're moving along nicely to the financial reports. And I do see the Edward Jones um, informational in the center. Thanks for all your prep work. Thank you. Uh, one more, one more, one more.
And our treasure micro uh, is not here tonight. And I don't know who on staff would like to do the heavy lifting for the financial reports. Um, co directors. Let's see, Jen, do you want to so, speak to this at all? So, I think on the Ed Jones, I think the only like in terms of numbers, I'm not, I don't know that I have anything to say about that. I know that the um, Edward Jones representative, I think, was contacting you yes. about who yes. to be put on that account. or And so that's the only thing I think related to the finance. Sure. Right. I believe you talked to Mike Doyle and Mike referred him to me. And I call, I, it was late in the week and I left a voicemail and I'll just warm up the trail again. Um, but right, we've worked the bank out, but right now the Edward Jones piece, um, who's uh, Did these usually come to Mike Doyle, looking like they do now? Correct, like yes. I believe so, yes. So the rest of us never really saw them. What's that again? We didn't see them. I, mean, um, I think he would, I, occasionally, them. Robert, he would bring them in, but this, yeah, this, is, this is more complete than I generally remember seeing. Okay. Uh, maybe a year-end thing, we might get a little deeper into the weeds. Um, and then what's our rhythm with the Comcast checks? So we just received just ours, received. and that we mentioned it in the director's report that okay. we just got the, um, the quarterly Comcast check, and um, it was a little bit more than the previous one, like a thousand and change. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's within what we're expecting. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Outside of that, I look, I look through the years or all the different ones that we've gotten, and it's like it's not, it's a very slight incline, but I think we're all kind of thinking it's a plateau, and really that's kind of where it's going. It sure. hasn't definitely decreased, but if we were to look across time and do a line that best fits, then it seems like there's this tiny little in okay. incline. And, and who in the new leadership tri tri triangle uh, does this stuff? Just look at, measure the accuracy, make complaints if necessary. Um, in other words, do you deal with all that? I, I think you're anticipating the circle conversation. Okay. That okay. you're, hey, CJ, good to see you. How you're a lot doing? better in life than you are in the mumble. How are we doing for cheers? <laughs> oh, Zach's the perfect time. You also look better than this good thing on the table. <laughs> The owl's been staring at me Thank all this you. time. Good to see you, CJ. Thank you, guys. Nice to see you all. We're in the midst try to of find pizza and. Uh, and hold on, I'll yeah, I don't need it. Um, we're in the midst of financial reports. Thank you for. And um, here we go. Yeah, but you do also have budget versus actuals. Thank you. If there's any numbers you want to draw our attention to if we're bleeding too fast or too slow anywhere or um, all's well. Yeah, I think in the budgets, I think, you know, we're expecting the compensation line to be less and mm -hmm. it's falling suit. Um, I was looking at the unemployment taxes and it seemed like it was super high against what we budgeted, but in looking at previous years, it matches up. So I think that it's just something that needs to be cool corrected in the next budget cycle to budget for a little bit more than what the taxes have been previously budgeted for. So it's not different than what's been in the past, but it is like, you know, like 200% of budget for that employment taxes. But I think all the things that we were kind of expecting to be lower, whereas like the health insurance also is much lower as that was one of the spaces also that we were looking at um, savings. And I think outside of that, everything is online. And I think um, we've been tracking our bits in terms of like office expenses and equipment purchases to make sure that we did have from the previous meeting, um, we had a couple of big purchases that were taken care of. So we had the maintenance contract for the hypercaster and we did get a new computer. So we do have a new computer in the edit So, so our what is it? Is it like an iMac or something like that? Yeah, it's a it's it's not an M1 iMac. The pretty it's colors not, one? No, or not? no, we're not ready to move that way yet. So if our total expenses are at fifty two twenty one on the year percent, 
um, of budget and we're well more than half of the year. I mean, a little more. Yeah, two months more than half of the year. We're in, we're in good shape. Um, people want to ask or share thoughts on the um, financial reports or um, entertain a motion to accept. Either option is welcome. Were there any surprises when you total this all up? No, I think, um, no, outside of the unemployment taxes, but that was, I just wasn't was, familiar with it and wondering why it was over. But then when looking at the past, it made sense. Okay. So not any real surprises. Okay. Okay, it's really silly. It's only twenty nine ninety seven, but I'm just curious, what's relocation? That was something that was in there from before. So I'm, I'm wondering if it was like leftover charges moving, from moving, the move. Moving expenses. Okay, some funny little, all right. What is government appropriations line 4200 under income? That's the state money that was uh, allocated to the 24 community media organizations mm. through the ban request. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that both both checks received that came into installments or were still awaiting one? Yes. So still the first that 1200 or 12,000 was the first from the first roll. And then so we are waiting for the second. Got it. The second okay. one's 24. Thank you. Mm. All right. And this is a mint from being on Randolph's budget committee. Um, you think you have a budget for the year, and then you have spending to date. Is it possible to add a column that's uh, expected? And that way you have both what's actually being spent to date and then what you expected to spend to date. It just makes it easy to zoom down and say, oh yeah, that's like a little over, a little under what we were thinking you'd see. Okay. Would that be you? We can, I can, I can make it. The magic, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can get pretty. Uh, mm. People feel fully apprised of the financials. How has the documentary lab been going? It's been going great. Um, we're going to discuss it in the director's report, and then okay. hopefully, um, I'm thinking for the October meeting, I could have a little kind of report back on the summer camps, and because we're still, we just wrapped up that one, so then we'll have, but we do have uh, some things to, to mention mm -hmm. regardless of that. Yeah. And our annual meeting, this is probably either new or old business. So we're just, hoping to, to determine a date for that. That's in the director's report too. So yeah, we do have Michael and I throughout a couple of days in September. And you know, maybe we can do that mm -hmm. today as a group. Just, mm -hmm. uh, just pick one. Yeah. And yep. we can start planning. Did the summer camps have its ending date or did they just sort of keep going and <laughs> and merge into the beginning of school. They have not a clear ending date. Yeah. Okay. And so we met. They just ended. And, yeah. And then the, they just ended last week. Yeah. Okay. The, the nature of the questions that we're getting are sound like the financial reports ought to be moved along so we can get to this good stuff. I said, yeah. um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to more than entertain the motion. Except the financial reports. So moved. Thank, Thank you, you, GJ. And seconded by Chad. And all those in favor of second financial report, please indicate with an aye. Aye. And opposed? Thanks, folks. Um, sorry to be that guy, but now we can actually talk about this great stuff. Um, annual meeting circles. Right. Um, it, at, it, yeah, your, your pleasure, Chris, whatever order you want. All right, in. cool. Okay, so we're going to jump into the co director's report and. Um, I'm just, uh, we got a lot here, of lots of exciting things. We've been super busy and um, yeah, we've had a great few last several weeks. So 
we've separated them into these uh, these sections. So I'll just kind of give you an overview and chat about some of this. So you know, um, of course, in our as always, in our in addition to our regular meetings, um, we've done some great new collaborative special events. We've been partnering with All Brains Belong, which is a new nonprofit based in Montpelier and um, All Brains Belong advocates for neurodiversity and um, they host uh, an, an event, a hybrid event called Brain Club. And they, we do that, they do that uh, in collaboration with us now. So it's a weekly uh, event at the Statehouse Lawn that they kind of took um, from the pandemic and, and brought it into the real world. And so it's, um, it's this, uh, that's kind of their flagship program, it feels like. So uh, Brain Club every Tuesday night and we're there. Um, yeah, that's been growing, growing great. Um, we did a successful live stream event from Statehouse Steps. So that's the first for Orca. Um, it was uh, two performances put on by a group called Cultivating Peace. So um, those were a nice, uh, we got our name out there and they, they gave us, they put us down as a sponsor on all their materials. So that was nice to see on the, on the flyers around town. Um, let's see, we live streamed from Vermont Tech College um, in Randolph for the first time for the Vermont Council and Homelessness event. Um, we've covered, we've, uh, covered a handful of uh, primary election candidate forums and events around the leading up to the primaries. So that was super exciting. And um, one of the ones that I think kind of got the most viewership, so I included on here, was the barnstorming at the State House where Bernie uh, came to um, speak on behalf of Becca. And so that was great. We were, we were down to downtown for that. Um, and then we were back with our live stream of the July 3rd parade. So that was super fun. And um, we had two hosts and a couple guests and then just kind of, and you know, it was, a, it was definitely a, a new uh, setup because we weren't at city center right there. So that was, uh, yeah, smashing success. It was, it was great. So when those are done, they're archived under the title of the event or under the day that it was run? They're recorded by us. Um, Jean, do you want to answer that? So in terms of like file name, we do the production date, so the date that it happened. So, so if I wanted to see the Cultivating Peace event, you have it. So if you went on our website, it would be under local, I think it's under community events, and Cultivating Peace might actually have their own series. Okay. So it's also, but it's the, the date of the production that it happened. This, okay. Yeah. And of course you can search on our site and you can search on our youtube as well so okay and we're if you're looking for something specific because we do have a lot of hours of content that if you want us to send something new way we'd be happy to do that um so yeah the outreach and community partnership uh in that realm we we worked with uh rural vermont um and we so i pointed out here that we really have been deepening our relationship with rural Vermont and um, kind of coming out of this transitional period too. It's been really great. So we partnered with them to, to just um, cover, I think we did five total um, events as part of this long weekend that was um, an agroecology encounter, they called it, each one teach one out in Marshfield. And um, what was really neat about this particular event or um, piece that we fit into was that it was part of an international organization called La Via Campesina, which is the international peasants movement. So the content was shared internationally. Um, and then we uh, shared the raw media with them to include, they're having somebody actually edit it as part of like a mini documentary. So that's really neat. Happy to support them with that. Um, we supported a graduate student from Northern Vermont University just recently. Um, she used our studio to conduct a series of interviews for uh, a short documentary on first responders in Vermont. Um, so Zach led the effort there to provide production assistance with her. Um, we've been uh, training a new uh, community producer, Jesse Huffman. Um, on some of the higher level production equipment that we have, like the cinema cameras. Um, and Jesse's also interested in learning editing. 
and super enthusiastic and kind of has a lot of experience um, in the director and writing role. So he's he's excited to like kind of plug into Orca and learn just to actual like behind the camera and, and using editing software. And so um, he's interested in doing some local restaurant kind of profiles, um, starting with Willowans. And one of the things that we've been talking to him is um, about giving him a little exercise to do is this video that we've been, that's been kind of on our list that you've seen, uh, uh, what we're now calling like an Orca Media commercial, like a short spot that really shares the story of Orca Media and kind of says how you can engage with us and what services and resources provide. So, you know, we're thinking that maybe Zach and Sean and myself can work with Jesse to, can, we can all do that together and we can kind of like learn through that process. So that's an idea that we pitched to him. Um, we had a filmmaker come and borrow equipment who was here from Atlanta and um, interviewing an artist at the Vermont Studio Center. And so she actually connected with me through someone I knew through the Vermont College of Fine Arts and she was here just for the day and needed some lights and some production equipment. So um, that was an exciting kind of short uh, turn around and she's going to give us her, her interview to play back. Um, we had a really great and successful Make TV camp, super positive feedback. We even had two brothers uh, immediately try to become community uh, or try to become camera operators. They wanted to apply for jobs. They were even looking into how to work here at 14. So we did a little like research and we found that uh, there was a a couple barriers that we the child labor laws. yeah and yeah. so we went we went through the child labor laws and we read some of that and we recommended that they kind of come back when they're 16 and that they oh, kind of want to exploit the youth yeah well we you know we encourage them to engage with us as community producers so they're really great Gardner and Campbell I had them last summer too and they're super they're very local they're like just down the road um yeah so we had a nice uh great um response, like I said, from that. And uh, we have a special uh, couple minutes of video that we'll, we'll show you in just a second here that Sean, our um, camera operator and um, post-production expert now that under Zach has uh, cut together a little like trailer, a kind of a highlights reel of the Make TV camp. So we can look at that in just a second. Um, so as we mentioned, the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab just wrapped up our second year, our six-week intensive, and we produced a great, uh, I think, really impressive for the amount of time that they had editing. They, we produced a great short documentary piece exploring the concept of an issue of poverty in central Vermont. So we talked and interviewed the, um, folks at the UU, did some on-the-street interviews. We uh, did an interview at Just Basics, the food pantry, and for the first time this summer, we had two youth fellowships that were supported by Sun Commons, so I paid two people to participate, and they were participants from last summer, so they kind of like took the lead in being like teacher assistants, so that was a really great um, relationship, and actually, we, we hired one of them as a camera operator, so uh, you'll see that in the staff. Um, so like I said, I'm going to have more of a kind of looking back and have some more feedback that we can present and also looking at some of the financials around the summer programs and um, we'll do that in uh, October. Yeah, so maybe we'll take a look at the video and then I can continue on. Is that, yeah, is that okay? That sounds good. Now, when was the actual video? It was like... Which one? The one that... The original one before Sean cut it. Oh, yes, that's a very good point. So, uh, this was the Make TV Camp, and they ended up, I'll give you a little backstory. They ended up doing this like parody news program, and um, they broke into a bunch of groups, um, and they all kind of wrote and produced their own segment. And all together, they were really committed, and, and then they edited it up and pieced them all together. And all together, I think it was like an hour and a half. So it was yes. a whole wow. news program. So <laughs> Sean took all of that and some of the like behind the scenes footage, and he cut it to seven minutes. Maybe we could watch the first five minutes. All right, take a look. Uh. 
Do you have the phone number? Welcome to Coyote News and good morning, Montpelier. I'm Bai Joden and I'm here with Hank Orman. Due to our recent <laughs> uh, rates, uh, we actually have been able to increase our like our just the content's quality. Give an example. Eccentric billionaire Dashiell Blumen, over to you, Dash. Are you rolling? Have you heard? iPhones are exploding all across the nation. How do you feel about that? Um, that would be a good thing for the nation. We use our iPhones far too much. You think that's uh, accurate? You know what's ironic here is that somebody who sees this is probably going to see it on their iPhone. <laughs> Maybe I should rethink my career. You ready to be rolling? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, Dash. If you're not in a hurry, can we interview you? No. Okay. You heard it now, folks. No. Excuse me, Dad. Do you have some time to speak? No, I don't. Oh. No, but one question for both of you. Can you both really sternly say no? Do not do not eat them. Oh my gosh. Uh why do you think people don't like to be asked questions in interview? They don't like to think about themselves too much. I honestly despise my voice, so I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Look closely on TV. You might see yourself. Maybe. Thanks, Dash. That was very entertaining. I see here uh, on the screen that you uh, had some rough patches. I knew that person's mother, and I will fib. Lucia, if you're watching this, I will tell your mother. Wow. That's what we call revenge. So I wanted to know, what was it like going on the street and interviewing people? A lot of the people... I asked, uh, went along with it quite well, and uh, gave very mysterious answers. Answers you would probably expect from someone possessed by a demon or a ghost. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, I heard you mention ghost. We'll have to wait for later for that one. Coyote News will be right back after this hour. Can we get the uncut version? <laughs> As you can see around us, a devastating storm spawned within the mouth of Satan himself is devastating our town, tearing up buildings, torrential rains hit this morning, and it absolutely wiped out my entire property. Okay, can we cut there? Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> Hello, uh, welcome back. Rich, I think some of the viewers might have been a bit confused about exactly what you meant. Uh, torrential downpours, I saw nothing of the sort. I think we should cut back to you. This this weather is horrible and it's ravaging our homeland. The rain is pounding down even now after all of these days, just crashing down, destroying everything. I worry what it means for the worldwide economy, to be completely honest. <laughs> I would advise against believing Rich. I do not know what he's talking about. And I think I'm going to go and take a walk to clear my head. Yeah, so that's all today, folks. <laughs> I really like that was some disturbing footage. I hope Cliff's okay. So here we have a rich arg to talk. I love it. Um, it really seemed like nice weather. What was what was the experience like? I think to the untrained eye, it may have seemed that way. However, it'll open your eyes and you can see fire like coming down. You said the <laughs> untrained eye. Uh, where did you go to school to become a meteorologist? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Um, it's been very eye-opening. Let's move on to some spooky local stories. Over to our local ghost expert, Ghost Ghost Man, who is definitely not me, and the full news team as they investigate local paranormal activity. <laughs> 
sir, sir, sir. How do you feel about a ghost? Oh yeah, there's ghosts here, all right. Actually, I did notice this thing over here. Uh, the building's floating. What? This was never here before. Came out a couple years ago, saw this corner floating. You see this area right here? That is floating, that is a ghost. That cannot be natural. That is no hole, that is a floating building, everybody. This must be some supernatural things going on. We're doing a ghost hunting, and we'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. I don't sure. The, well, I'll refer to the story because this story was print, printed a couple of years ago. But her name mm. was Anna. Anyway, Anna. Ghost. Yes. Mm. Cool name. In 1897, Anna, born mm. Carrie Anna Wheeler in East Montpelier, oh. was a 17-year-old woman who had plans to meet her fiance Jack Wheeler, and mm. she caught the 8:30 train to Barry for Decoration Day festivities. This woman shot Anna and then herself using a 32 caliber Goodness. revolver. Wow, that was uh, that was bloodier than I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, goodness. I'm <laughs> starting to rethink this. I am just a child. I fear existence. No. The ghost is here. As you can see, you probably can't see. And I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. What do you do with your time when you're alone up here? I like to flicker light. <laughs> that is creepy. Have you possessed anyone? Uh, no. I haven't really thought about it, but I could. No. <laughs> I'd rather you not. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to another spooky episode of right. Spooky Stories with Ghost Ghost Man. Now that was spooky. Sadly, that's all the time we have today, folks. I'm Hank Gorman. And I'm by Joden. We can't wait to see you next time. Cliff, is that you? Wait, Cliff. It's coming. Cliff, <laughs> what happened? All right. Yes, yeah, that's really fine. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. We had a full week, and yeah, they very much enjoyed them. For the future, that was really Yeah, Dasha was very uh, like uh, philosophical the whole time. It was funny. It was just super uh, great. Um, there were yeah. two anchors, though. Yeah. Whoever wrote yeah. that script. Yeah, they, it was way more sarcastic and way more um, cynical than I was expecting in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was fun. I'm, I'm glad they enjoyed it. So, yeah, we could share if you want to watch the whole thing where the full segments are really funny. I was yeah. very impressed. Yeah, and that was uh, at the end, that was Dave Littlefield, our uh, PBS resident, uh, volunteered to be the witness, the ghost witness. <laughs> Um, great. So yeah, that's that's our video, and like I said, we'll share the program. So uh, moving on, we the one of the new exciting big news um, is that after a long conversation with the disbanded board from the Green Mountain Film Festival, um, we have accepted their uh, their ask for us to to take over and manage the festival moving forward. Oh my goodness! So that came with a fourteen thousand dollar check. And so they handed us some money and they said, you know, please keep this going. And they felt like it was a good match. And so that's, we were very excited about that. And um, one of the things I've been doing is uh, I put together a, a local advisory committee to kind of help manage and, and, and reimagine re the fest, the film fest. And um, the first like major decision was that we would uh, wait until 2024 because it's, it's typically a March event and decide, you know, what makes sense to, um, mm -hmm. and kind of look at everything that we inherited from them. And Chad is on the advisory committee along with Kristen and Lucas and the Vermont Production Collective folks. So that's super ex exciting. And we uh, we released, a, we did a press release uh, saying that, you know, it's not, um, I think the, the biggest question was everyone was wondering what had happened to the Green Mountain Film Fest and was it dead and gone or so we we wrote a, a press release saying that it's it's coming back in 2024 and hope, hopefully we can do some events leading up to that yes yeah. is, is there any chance that some of the past is in any way in video form and, and so that as we announced that it's coming again in 2024 is there a way we could have the highlights of the, the 20 years or 18 that preceded right. that would be fun you know i I'm still going through the materials that we inherited from the, the board, uh -huh. their former board. And 
there, you know, unfortunately there was a death in their, uh, in, in one of the, the folks that was on their board and a lot of stuff like left with them and they were locked out of a computer, they said, so they are missing a, a handful of things, but, okay. um, you know, that's, that's life and, and, and nonprofit world. So it's like, um, what we, what we did get was a lot of old photos and things like that. So maybe we can cut together something that would be fun to play on our channel. I think that's a great idea. And to just use for like social media. So, I mean, yeah. I think we should talk to Claudia, uh, Jarecki's yeah. wife and the big picture show because she's done a, an annual documentary film fest. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, in the, usually late January or, or maybe early February up at the at the, the theater in play in Waitsfield. Oh okay. And okay. and she would get some of the best documentaries for that festival. So just getting advice from her on running how she ran her film festival That's great, yeah. to okay. give us ideas as we go into the 2024. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Um so the yeah the um the other thing is that the bridge had uh, contacted us. The Cassandra from the bridge would like to do a, a, a piece um, highlighting work and media and what is going on with the leadership change. Um, and so we'd also, you know, want the board to be involved if we want quotes from the board. So one of the things I was thinking is that we would wait until we, you know, had our special meeting in September and move forward with. Uh, what kind of appropriate announcement we thought would we would want to make at that time. So um, I'll probably just respond to her and let her know that, you know, we need a little bit of time. Um, so the last thing on the uh, in the community partnership outreach realm was that um, we did receive really great feedback from Tina Shanda, Shanda. Shanda thank you, the technology director at Orange Southwest Supervisory Union. Um, after a consulting project that we did with her um, on purchasing equipment and kind of a curriculum support. So they purchased some uh, video equipment um, for the, I think it's the middle schoolers. And so anyway, I just, I put a quote in here that um, I could read really quick. I thought it was really nice feedback. So she said, um, probably the most important thing is that the adults are now able to envision what students can do and the importance of having our students exposed uh, to creating in this way. You helped to make a difference for the students at OSSD. Thanks again. So I, yeah, it's just a really nice um, positive feedback and something that we hope to do in the future with local schools, just kind of supporting in media arts education realm. Um, so moving on to the strategic plan. So uh, the three of us have been working on policies and procedures and clarifying some of the ambiguities in the organization as we kind of touched on earlier. Um, and so that also working to like increase our visibility um, and just think about ourselves, right? And kind of look inward. Um, so one of the things that is kind of important to point out is that um, as aligned with the band community, we're, we've been moving forward with using the language of community media center as opposed to AMO or public access TV, um, which is kind of not only van is is kind of uh, moving forward with that. I think it's a national trend in the public access now community media world. So we're also using the term community producer instead of access user. Um, so yeah, we even have uh, some new community producer t shirts coming out. And I do have an image of them if you want to see, but um, Absolutely. you want to see? Okay, all right, check it out. So I'll pull it up and share my screen. Okay. So these were designed by uh, Bobby Hackney in Burlington. And so I'll get the zoomed in view. So the front says Community Media Center, Central Vermont, Media. Um, and the back says Community Producer. And it's got our website and our. So it has a, it has a website in the tiny print that's underneath. Don't just watch TV, make TV. Yeah, it's the website and the the social media uh, handle, if you will, that okay. is how to get a hold of us everywhere. So nice got have it in a little slightly larger print, but that's okay. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. Maybe the next round we can get a little larger. I mean, I don't want people staring staring at my chest or back that close. <laughs> <laughs> 
We'll have some stickers that you can hang yeah, out too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, socially distant. <laughs> so back over here. The, the same designer who did the um, uh, the redesign of the imagery for the Green Mountain Film Fest. Yes, yeah, so I should show that too. So uh, yeah, really quick. Um, Thank you, Chad. So I, he did the t-shirts for us and I really liked what he did. So um, as part of the press release and the announcement that we made for the Green Mountain Film Festival, I had him do a couple graphics here that you can see. Oops. There we go. So he did um, this uh, Green Mountain Film Festival and now presented by Orca Media. And then this is kind of the landing page that we inherited from them. So I just mm -hmm. put this all on here and this is the press release. So. If anybody wants to read it, you can go to the gmffestival.org. Yeah. And then this is the thing we've been posting on social media. Well, yeah. So, so were those t-shirts like images or do we actually have t-shirts? We don't have them yet. Okay. They're being printed. Do we have the hats of yesteryear? The hats. Uh, we've thought about doing another round of hats and we can. They, they were out of the hat, the particular hat that I had asked about. So we can do something like that. Okay. I just, yeah. You think we need gear? Yeah, I, I agree. Or they say call it in some places Swag. merch. <laughs> merch. Yeah. yeah. That's what they call it in yeah. So is your is the branding that you're doing right now, like for example, t shirts, it's just like the permanent the what Orca Media is gonna stick to in terms of color and all that. Um and well fonts and all that's that. I, mean, I think that's, something that we could maybe talk about as yeah. we like jump into the strategic planning process. And actually yeah. I have a quick thing I'll mention on that. But I, I think what we did now is like this is just like one round of design and it's just a play on the current logo. I mean okay. our orange and black stuff has been the same colors. It's been the same for a while. And that font is the same more or less. And we just kind of made it a little bit more playful. The yeah, idea this is just something like that, that they could wear probably. while they're out like filming yeah so they're sort of id'd as a like yeah i think that the idea is fantasy. that community producer is somebody that's engaging with us anybody could wear the shirt my son could wear the shirt you know it's like it, they're not necessarily staff of orca media so mm -hmm. we can also give them out as yeah. promotional items and as long as we have the brilliant cartoonist type artist we could do an orca a whale, a black and white whale. Do you want the whale to come back? Yes. So, okay. I have an old no, but I just think that in a lot of ways, he could do it in a way that would make it funny and, and sort yeah, of tie it into our mission. We could definitely, uh, we could definitely talk about that. It's just an yeah. idea because yeah. he only takes black and white and he's already got black and white in the original design without him, but right. with his color, yeah, he could make a black and white whale in color of all kinds around it. Cool. That'd be know. cool, yeah, yeah. And I will, uh, I really support and agree with the um, the t-shirts for brand identity and community building. The, um, a couple of years ago, somebody responsible for building a 20,000 person international visitor, like literally there would be 20,000 people coming international to a site in the US, coached an organization that I was founding about, you know, have a t-shirt. So we've had a different t-shirt color every year with a common theme. And this year, um, the box was gone an hour after it arrived. They, oh, really? The t-shirt demand at $20 a t-shirt was unbelievable. So another organization that made something to support our organization made 200 of them, and then they were all sold out by the end at $20 wow. to $24 a shirt. So the, um, but we, the, the, so the, I, you know, I just, I think you're right. This is a good, all of you are, you know, <laughs> Are are on a on the right. Yeah. I like your brand building approach. I think yeah. based on my experience or our experience, it it yeah. you know, it works. But I'd say, and I also and I agree with both of you. I just just be very thoughtful about it. Yeah. And take yeah. your time to actually, actually vet it through. Right. The group of people, whoever you need to vet it through, because it's yeah. Once you have it, right, you should stick to it because that's what branding is. Right. Yeah, and that's true. And then and it's I, recognizable when I see from far away. I know who that is. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I think that that's something that we could definitely talk about. Like if we do some kind of visioning or something like, yeah. do we want to update our bubble logo that we've been using or, you know, so that's, there is a lot of potential mm -hmm. there. So I think that, and with the t-shirts, it was also like a decision was that we hadn't, we don't have anything to give away and we haven't in a while. So it was like, we need to do something fun. And mm -hmm. so, and Bobby Hackney is a really great designer and, 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 um, so it was nice to work Is with him. Is he volunteering yeah. or? No, we, I, I paid him. So yeah, he's, but he's got a good rate. And yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I mean, the Oracle Will is highly recognizable and fun. You know, it's yeah, and I'm bad. also thinking about could we use a, a van with all of this uh, stuff on it? The kind of design. Could we words? use a, a vehicle? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, mean, I might. I, that, I might. Thought of that I might talk house. to Hal Colston about whether Good News Garage might be able to help us find one. Yeah, was he was affordable. just in here the other day. Mm -hmm. Moving to Aruba. I got an update from this. Yeah. But <laughs> given given the way that we're breaking into the community and trying yeah. new things, it yeah. would meet mm -hmm. his politics. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and maybe and, having um, a vehicle that we could. Yeah. And some of us have given. Yeah. I've given probably six cars over my life to Good News Garage. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's definitely something to, to think about. I, I think that that would fit well within like a strategic plan too, like five years down the road, are we gonna want well, when a you Prius, you know, or something like that, yeah. You go a little marching, if they have it again of the, of the, of the cabs and down in Rattleboro, you could have the Orca vehicle with yeah. the artwork on it and some of the gear, yeah. you know, take the equipment and camera persons and, and answers, I think, you know, it also all relates. down in one vehicle. Yeah, I absolutely. I think it relates to like how, you know, there is an expectation that you work for us that you're using your own vehicle too, even though yeah. you don't have a vehicle. Um, great, that's awesome. And I think that, so that also kind of brings me to the, um, we are hoping to move forward with Nathan Suter as a consultant on a strategic planning project. Um, and we were, we were saying more or less that we could maybe begin the fall or this fall or winter. Um, and some of the like tangible things that we were talking about starting with are like a community needs assessment, right? Where we like Nathan mm -hmm. facilitates us actually reaching out, surveying our, our service area and kind of figuring out maybe what do they think of Orca? What is the brand, you know, do they, um, what do they want to see us do more of or less of or something? And then uh, also uh, Nathan proposed like a staff and board retreat. So that could be something th that we all think about. Um, and that will be more like around the visioning realm. Like, what do we yeah. see? What, what are our needs, rather like cultural needs, financial needs? What's the vision we have for ourselves? Um, so I think that that's an exciting thing to look forward to. That's sure. a yeah. Yeah. Stand goals. Sorry. Okay. So yeah. yeah. And then um, stand up. So the next item was that uh, we did send out, or I sent out the um, Orca Media Circles document. So it was uh, what I, we said, a call to action. And if you have any questions now on that, I'm happy to take your questions. And then as well, if we wanted to just like plug some people in now, maybe this would be a, a good time. Or if you want to respond back to me, I, I'm kind of open to ideas there yeah i didn't see the later pages of it until i looked at it again the second time like the explanation so i was sure, really I confused by it first sure. um the, the circles of trust yeah the venn diagram of we could um get yeah, please consider but we could actually nail this stuff down in terms of who's on what circle and um at this dedicated September meeting. That's that, what I was thinking. That yeah, is, maybe and then because that is all about plenty of time to look at assessing it yeah. this co-director model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please, yeah, please go ahead and do what you're doing, but maybe that nitty gritty-ish stuff well, fits I was, perfectly with that. Well, this is a great in. time to sort of check in and hear what you're saying so we can think. Yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. Right, lay that Yeah, I think because the last time that we had talked about it, it was more like in the, uh, kind of bird's eye view and now it's it's more or less like here's the the space um that we're hoping to to fill so rather than like actually making any decisions around it i mean we can take a quick look at it or you can you know you can all look at it and write back yeah to so yeah um is the commercial you mentioned forgive me for jumping in with this i just haven't heard it come up is the commercial that you mentioned um something that you could play us a short of um because i think there's a lot of opportunity to reach out again to select boards and um, school boards. Yeah, definitely. That. So that's uh, something that we're hoping to do with the new community producer. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not something that's been produced yet. I want to jump in. Please. It's going to be kind of a little bit left field. Yeah, yeah. Board. My question is, are you all running like a, like a list of things that you need to hit, like something visual that's up there? Like, I, I would like to... I, 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 I keep hearing like different things like the like the commercial uh, now updating policies in terms right. of user like I think you should consider having a list that's permanent 
so that you attack those absolutely those different, different areas like also we talked about um hr is that mm -hmm. we have that document already done um like I mean, all those I think documents that, we talked that about. would fall in the policy circles i understand so it. yeah so just a, a uh a Quick to answer your question, yes, we definitely have been doing that. Part of our like planning meetings that we do yeah. on Wednesday is is kind of doing a running list of how we feel, you know, the the projects, if you will, that yeah. would live in these circles going forward, and, and the ones that we feel like need to be tackled right away, yeah. like looking at policies and procedures, looking at, you know, something that, that's really straightforward, like did we pay for content, you know? So um, yeah. and then maybe that that outreach circle would be like, is it time to update our brand? What is that? You know, yeah. what do we expect from that? So um, maybe it'd be best to just kind of all look at that and then visit this in September because there is no, I don't think that there's a super urgency tonight to like no. get into these circles. But but to answer your question, we are definitely we we as soon as the circles are formed. We have some work for them that, um, but you know, it's going it's going to be more or less as needed, right? So that I don't think that there's like an expectation that these are monthly meetings. Do you have it that you can throw them up? Because yeah, I mean, what you just said one. was yeah. already better than what I was able to glean from the sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you can, and I, I'd also I, I, there, there were two three of you here. We mostly heard from Chris and um, and you know, I just heard a hint that you guys are having weekly meetings, but I didn't know. You know, so this is all. Because our interest is, well, you're doing a really novel thing. How's it going? You know, are you all happy? Yeah. Are you, can you give us an interim? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you see this? Um, okay. So this is kind of like the, just the, the bird's eye view that we talked about last meeting and more or less on the, on the right is like a, domain we've been saying like a definition of what the that circle is going to tackle right um and then these are the, this is the idea of how they overlap right um and it, it i think it is helpful once you see them like away from each other so this is just like um the uh all of them at once right so this is the the kind of the domain what what we're um, saying that the work ahead is and how many members we hope to, to plug into them. And then when you look at them individually, it kind of, I think it, it's more clear. So policy circle, for example, that would be, you know, handling policies and systems. Um, and then potential projects would be like updating the policies and procedures in the employee handbook, general policies. Um, so ideally a, a board member or two with HR experience, uh, if interest in um, diversity, equity, inclusion, um, results-based accountability, things like that, that would, yeah. um, and then there would be like a point person from the co-directors in this case, Jin. So outreach circle, um, that would be community engagement realm, fundraising, advocacy, marketing, special projects. Um, and then you can see some potential projects there. So similar idea, the board recruitment section, what kind of we're hoping for there. Um, that would be me, right? So. And then facilities, um, that would be all things physical, right? Equipment, IT, facilities, um, changes to, to production equipment, um, thinking about studio, thinking about um, logistics at City Hall, um, our website update project. So that would be Zach and ideally two board members. And then, and then oh. you would share the education and training that would live in outreach. That would be yeah. An outreach. Yeah, we, I feel like. Why that would... did you decide for outreach versus? Yeah, I think we kind of renamed some of them, but mm -hmm. outreach we kind of feel like is broad enough that that is going to include the arts okay. education and and summer programs and. Oops, got hand. Yeah, I, I'd like. I have only three days before the event that I wanted to have us be at. And I don't think we probably are going to be at it. It's called Summer Spice Celebration of Folk Music at Hubbard Park on the 27th of August. It's Katie Trout's usual winter event that's been moved to the summer this year okay. and has all these other great groups that are there. I don't think anybody's covering it. Oh, really? Yeah, we could. We could and so I'm just saying, I, I think once in a while, I, I like this group to sort of lay down something where we think something that somebody's doing. Sure. Deserves coverage or publicity or be part of what we reach out to the community to do. And this is exactly what I what I mean. It's something that instead of 
Katie Trout's thinking to call us because she's trying to figure out some way to have people with their phones record some of it. Um, I agree, then we yeah. reach out to her and say, we would like to at least send a cameraman to, to be part of this all day event at Hubbard, Hubbard Park. That's a great idea. And Saturday. If you want to leave that with us, we can. I do, that's what can. I brought it for. Cool, thanks. <laughs> um, and one of the things with our new intern, which I'll mention is that uh, Jin and, and myself, we were kind of, uh, one of the ideas was to have him scour Front Porch Forum in seven days and looking at events that, you know, so that we also can, yeah, keep our eye on the community. And well, I'd be on that committee because I've got all the day. Okay, yeah. The well, then I, you sound like you're already today's world. volunteering for the outreach. All, all the stuff we're going to show. It's all yeah. in the world. Thank God Jim gets it yeah. to them. If we just the papers don't have TV guides anymore. Can we say so right now? Jim, should sure. be on your policy circle? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if you are already uh, confident, I think that, yeah, yeah. And we're thinking you for a policy yeah. circle, so I'm glad to hear that. And I think this is really, I, I think it's so, it's, you move so much more efficiently in these yeah. small groups, and yeah. I think it's a really good way to engage the board and get us a little bit more involved in sort of those types of uh, activities. Um, uh, but I also just want to say, like, don't get too far ahead of the strategic planning either, because like that might lead where a lot of this work goes. So sure, you know, sure. I, I think that's another thing to keep in mind. And I wanted to ask about the strategic planning is, um, I'm doing strategic planning right now at the library, and we've created kind of a strategic planning circle that has representation from the staff, uh, the library commission, and the friends of the library. And is there going to be something like that for the strategic planning, or is that kind of envisioned as with you folks taking the lead and us providing input at retreats and things like that. So I think that we like just started to think about how we want to do strategic planning and part of like the community needs assessment, it would be like the staff needs and what, and we're starting, I think it's a little bit later in the director's report that we're starting to meet with the camera operators a little bit more regularly. So that would be a way to try to get more feedback from them. So I think when we start to think strategic planning, it's definitely, we know that we need the community needs assessment. So, but it's also, we'll think, you know, it's like with the staff and what they're visioning that working for ORCA means and it's, in, and then the board. And so hopefully whether that comes out in retreats or if it's, you know, more like with the circle work, we're able to maybe do it a little bit more efficiently than just like sometimes the retreats get a little bit long and boring and yeah. <laughs> painful. So it might be that, you know, we just do these little pocket meetings and then, but I think it's one of those things where I don't know if Oregon has done a strategic plan in the past. So it's we've like- We've talked, we talked about it. And we've done a little, uh, what was his name? We did, we did do some work, but it didn't really, I don't know, com there was a lack of completion, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you're also reminding me, Jim, when you talked that Nathan has sort of like tiers of ways you can access them. So it's sort of like strategic planning light, strategic yeah. planning deluxe. Mm -hmm. And he's, it's all kind of spelled out. Maybe that's something we look at in September. And as well. maybe we, okay. I think so. You and then Nathan. Did Nathan be plays Paul Costello? Well, I don't know that we were working with no. Paul. I thought he was the head of the when we, when I was director in Memorial. Oh, so Nathan Sear is an outside consultant that just does like okay, strategic yeah. planning. So. Because I was thinking Paul Costello has made we're, it better. We're Vermont was super helpful in explaining kind of the, the okay. co-director. Uh, he helped Morris organize the whole of uh, Morrisville. But in terms of a strategic planning, okay. it would be Nathan's. Mm -hmm. That's oh, fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's good. Um, a couple thoughts. Well, first of all, I, you know, our, we haven't really been, I'm really impressed. Thank you for this terrific report. And um, it's just a really dynamic, the energy is terrific. Um, so that's on a positive note. I, um, you know, you probably heard my, well, okay. <laughs> As a board, we're going to say, okay, but let's check in. And um, so my, my feedback is positive. I'm like, okay, this looks good. You know, congratulations, great job. Super happy that you all seem happy. You're important, you're the heart of Orcamedia. So just speaking as one of your, but I think I'm speaking for all of us, just looking around the room, you know, good job. Yeah, it's actually been a real pleasure to work with you and watch how decisions get made truly collaboratively. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we lost John Block and we lost Senator Doyle, uh, two of our sort of people who just automatically tended to think, think strategically. And um, 
So would you agree that they kind of just had a habit? Um, yeah, and they also had history too. They really mm -hmm. had a, a sense of the, Wait, Bill Doyle? the reach. Senator Bill Doyle. He passed? No, no, no. Oh. I mean, we lost them on the floor. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was just yeah. saying, yeah. for a second, so I was. Yeah. We work out lost them. Yeah, we are. Okay, we are work Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to say, yes. not to my knowledge. <laughs> but, um, but I think that you've identified something you know, that maybe we weren't aware of ourselves. And um, I'll, I'll just say that, you know, part of what we're hoping and why we are, you know, looking at using Nathan as a consultant is because it is a, a process and it's something that I feel like we feel strongly that would benefit from somebody outside that has plenty of experience. We're looking at this for a while. I mean, yeah. since Rob was here. Yeah, we did start right. at we the tail end of Rob Brown saying that yeah, that's when we first met with Nathan. Um, so who is Nathan and how did you, you know, select him and how much does he charge and uh, those are my questions. I literally just wrote my questions. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Report, so I, have a I think we all kind of knew Nathan from different. Uh... So Nathan helped with the community assessment for the Montpelier School Board. So he was part of their district wide visioning committee. And he and so that's where I think we first saw him because he was doing this type of work for the school board. And we we're like, oh, it seems like, you know, he's familiar with the community already because he just did this needs assessment and district wide visioning. So it might be easy, or, or not easier, but to use his already established, like use the money that the school board, like, like got him used to the environment and the community and be able to use that to say, okay, well now with our community assessment. And so, and it was, and watching him at the school board, it was like, oh, he seems like, you know, he definitely fits in to the culture that we're trying to bring where it's, you know, it's all about not make, making sure he seemed very, very, um, detailed about making sure who's doing the surveys and that it's not just like when he started to see trends that it was just people with a higher education it's like okay we need to kind of change it and try make sure that it's we're making other ways to get this information so it was nice to see that he was really being thoughtful about trying to get a wide range of what the community is about so that's where we heard about him and then what he charges i don't I think you did shop around. We did shop oh, around yeah. a little bit, and yeah. um, we we ended up just kind of. I, I think we were all kind of gravitated towards Nathan just because of his his personality. He was also my former neighbor when I lived in on, in the same house as John and Rebecca on Liberty Street. So he was so he oh, knows John Block and Rebecca from Liberty Street as well. So that's, um, that's how I first met him. Could you share his price? Yeah, I mean, you share it with me. But you want to do that? Uh, in September, we, we can. Well, I, I was thinking you could share via email and people could digest. Yeah. Oh, sure. Does that. everybody want to see that? Yeah. Just a, so I, I, I received this, but it would yeah. be, be yeah. great if yeah. everyone had a bad. good sense of, okay, this yeah. is the it life. This is the deluxe. Right. Well, if that and his curriculum be pay and some of the projects he's worked on to sort of help us understand his yeah. uh, what he's bringing. Sure. Yeah. I, can, I can share that out. And then yeah. we can have that's more that's of an informed discussion in September. And if you have that for the other people that you looked at and rejected, uh, or you tentatively rejected, that would be great as well. Sure, it might yeah. be a resource for all of us, um, this group you've identified. Yes, absolutely. I, we can share that. I'll send it out to all of you and take a look. Um, and then um, just review the bylaws before this meeting to make sure I got the order of operations right. Mm -hmm. Bylaws state that our um, we elect officers to the meeting following the annual meeting, which is, uh, you know, uh, default scheduled for May, but can be moved by a move, move motion of the board, which we did, leading us to, if you guys all nailed down an annual meeting, right? So that's potential the, time, and the next thing I had here was um, maybe I. Um, I could just quickly read through or like just touch on this the staff and the our financials and that was like the next the, the okay yeah, yeah. yeah so I just wanted to, to let you all know that we we did hire uh, three new camera operators um, Liam our intern through the Vermont um, youth employment program has left but now we have Matt who just started on Monday through the Vermont youth employment program um, so Liam had a great experience and we did some kind of feedback and um, review and Liam hopes to come back next summer. 
Um, as far as finances, um, I could just kind of read what we have here. We did get the check from Comcast for uh, $107,910. Um, then we have our accounts listed here, which I can read through or you can take a look. Um, like I mentioned too, just this has a little bit more information on the statewide regional work that we've been doing with Van. Um, we're kind of part of this larger conversation that um, is more in the information gathering phase, um, but it's basically Eric Ford of Vermont Public is trying to facilitate a, a meeting with the Sergeant at Arms to try to figure out what is going to happen in the Senate chambers, the House chambers, and the committee rooms as far as like access to live streaming and how community media organizations can uh, tap into that conversation and be part of that as they make some decisions. And send somebody. Um, so then in our grand upcoming, formerly our to do, which I rebranded as upcoming, um, is uh, creating that video commercial and working with the community producer, maybe some of our interns uh, to really do something exciting that we could have as like filler on the channel that says, you know, you're watching Orca Media, this is the services and resources that we provide and, you know, how you can engage with us. So that's something that is to come. And then of course, uh, the, the big thing that we wanted to determine was the date for the open house. So um, that's been on our list. And the dates here that I have are the Friday, September 23rd or Friday, September 30th. Um, and then so hoping to maybe make a decision about that. And then we can move forward with our grant plan. And our next, our sort of assessment of our, our management model is the 27th, just mm -hmm. to keep all our late September ducks in a row. Um, if that helps people lean one way or the other. Well, it looks like the 30th might work a little better of the two that you, you mentioned. What, what two dates? It's Friday the 23rd or the 30th. This would be an evening event. Or Traditionally, it's like four to six thirty, some okay. kind of thing towards the end of business hours. Yeah, it's usually still light out. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So maybe we start at a similar time, or maybe the thirtieth is better for me. Thirtieth, okay. All right, because so that's a consensus choice. So. And also, if we're meeting the twenty seventh, and there are some loose ends to scurry about, if we we get our heads together on the twenty seventh too. Mm -hmm. So and we do have our twenty seventh Orca Special Board meeting. Yeah. Yep. And I also, yeah, I like the idea of maybe we even invite Cassandra to the uh, open house, you know, seeing as the bridge is right here. So for the yeah. building. Cassandra's mentioned here, and I have this arrow and a question. Who is Cassandra? Oh, she's the managing editor at the bridge. Sorry. Okay. And the bridge? Hemingway. Oh, yeah, Hemingway. Uh, the bridge is our local free community newspaper. Ah, the bridge. Yeah, yeah, the bridge. That's also our neighbor right here. Yeah, I think they call themselves... That's the story on us. Yeah, there's the bridge. Yeah. Right, right there, right there. Yeah, on the way out, you can pick up. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, technically, it's Montpelier and surrounding communities, but I don't think that it gets very far outside of. I haven't seen it in East Randolph, but. <laughs> yeah. So, Eric Ford didn't make the uh, minutes or the schedule tonight, so I'm writing them in. I think our all is frozen. Eric, well, I'm sorry, say that again. Eric Ford didn't show up on the thing that you were talking about. That statewide regional meeting with Eric Ford didn't get in that paragraph. So I'm I'm assuming that, that that did happen or will happen or that you got the connection with Eric Ford, the guy who's does yeah, public. We have a, yeah. We're there. Uh, it's, okay. it's kind of just a big email. No, no, it's just, I want to be, my whole thing is trying to connect the various media. So right. I would have talked tonight about you trying to connect with both DEV and GDR and GDH. But anyway, I won't do that because we're pretty busy. Yeah. Well, if we, I've been having ongoing conversations with Lou over at WG4. Yeah, like an event where we just, you know, um, were there. It wasn't live, right? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's incredibly relevant to what we're doing. Bring it back to my next point. This is my job is to ask these politically incorrect questions. Um, if uh, so, Pride is a nationwide movement. It 
probably was the deciding uh, uh, financial source in the recent primaries, Democratic primaries for the congressional race. Becca was able to mobilize a lot of money coming in from the Biden movement. So it's, it's important. NRA is another nationwide movement. What happens if somebody comes in and says, would you sponsor our NRA event? I mean, so as far as sponsorship goes, I think that it, it's, of course, a case-by-case -case basis. This was, um, this was a local group, right? So this was Montpelier Pride. Is, is yeah, a no, it'll be a group. local NRA group. I, like, trust me, I have gun owners all around me in East Randolph. Yeah, I mean, if, if that happened, I think we would want to discuss it as an organization and as co-directors. Um, so I can't say yes or no right now. Yeah. So we have a issue because the, right? Um, possibly, just something to be yeah, aware of. Like your yeah, answer was very warm towards Pride and, right. and it was like, oh God, really? He's yeah. A, oh, I was Go gonna ahead. say, Go so ahead. part of the policies is that we are clarifying and coming up with how we determine. So that's where, like with sponsorship, we were like, okay, well, what? how do we determine whether some group gets it or not? And we were a little bit loosey goosey before so now as we are trying to pin down our policies and procedures so like with content like i know like when we did the primary like we sent an email out to the democrats and the republicans and the progressives mm -hmm. so we sent out to all three yeah and then whoever responded we you know we covered and so we do we do try to be caught conscious of how we're making sure that we're hitting everything and i think that that just needs to filter in through all the other policies and I think we are, when we talk, we're trying to be, we are like, okay, th what were the assumptions before? And were we basing it on like, oh, you know, it was what we did, but then it's like, okay, let's come up with some criteria. And I think that that is like, as we move forward, it is one of our major, I think, um, bits that we're trying to really kind of filter out through all the policies that we are being fair. Mm -hmm. And that if we make an effort here, we make an effort there. And that, and so a lot of times what we've said is, we have the form online that says they've uncovered. So anyone who wants us to come, regardless of who they are, if we have the staff capacity, we will send them too. And I think we've gotten some, unlike in terms of the conservative stuff, like some people that have reached out to us through the coverage form saying, you know, could you cover us? And we sent someone. And so it's one of those things where we do, like we try to, if they want us, we'll go if we, you know, with the staffing. But in terms of if we do inquire, and I think when we do the primary stuff, if we're doing any election coverage, that we are trying to be yeah. um, sending out to everyone and trying to be like that. So I think it is definitely, we are always kind of looking at what are some of the biases we might be harboring and trying to be like, okay, well, you know, it's, so I, we do definitely recognize that it's there and we are trying to be more mindful of being fair across so, the board like that. So um, I, I wanted to say something. I do, do, do say. Please. I think, well, for example, the NRA group, we could sponsor them with a, with the channel, with the cameras. There are other ways in which we sponsor people, right? Yeah. And then I was thinking, like, we, were t we had a conversation um, a few meetings back where we were talking about clean bonds, about, you know, what right, are the bonds? So right. that is also... Right, we're, yeah. we're yeah. this is what we believe in, where, right? A little bit, right? So that's the same, money funding. right? Yeah. So, yeah. so how do we see? So, yeah. I don't see this as a bad thing saying yeah. I'm going to support yeah. you with money and I'm going to support you with cameras, right? It's yeah. different, but I, I think it's fine. I, I, I don't know, yeah. right? I mean, I think, I think we just be, and it's a okay. nation that's so polarized right now, yeah. So, to, to say, oh, able to go on there must be left wing. And pride events must be left wing because there's gay Republicans, and I mean, I just that sort of like well, we already have already putting people in yeah. the categories. I I just think we we I'm you know looking. broadly try to get people's yeah. voices and I will out add there. It, not often yeah. are organizations soliciting us for sponsorship. I mean, this has been I think we've had really two really. this yeah. summer. You know, so it's like it, I mean, it is case it's by case. It's more yeah. likely that an organization that isn't very well healed is going to turn to us because the NRA has. They've got, oh, yeah. they've got their own TV channel. Both of them are huge. Yeah. I mean, they are massive. But I, I, um, I liked what so you, when you say pride, like is that said, the, though, when you spoke up and you, you said we are, we reached out. Yeah, we do. You know, yeah. and that's, yeah, that yeah I've no, I have no doubt about again. that. So, yeah. I want to be able to answer that. Like, hey, I'm part yeah. of an organization that reached out if, if they didn't say yes. 
yeah, I hope you'll reach out again yeah. because part of the the thing that that I think makes Orca Media special is the opportunity to truly try to be a fourth estate, the, yeah. the, which is missing. The fourth estate, the perception of the fourth estate, whether it's reality or not, is so broadly that it is as tainted as Congress, as yeah. you know, as the judicial system ever since the decision that judges could accept political, you know, uh, contributions to that Minnesota decision. It, it's so the the opportunity is community television is a believable statement that we are really trying to be um, a, a voice for. Go ahead. We are doing it because I, that's why I brought the schedule. You should actually look at it. There's a panel yeah, on guns. I, There's a racial disparity uh, discussion. There's the Osher Lifeline Institute. Whatever talk be, whoever the person in OSHA talks goes on our television set. It doesn't say it's a conservative or it's a liberal. The OSHA people talk about what they're an expert about. Yeah. And I, so if, if we're already showing this stuff, that I think the question was whether it's sponsorship means a different kind of invitation. Because yeah, we, we, we cover a lot of different areas. And believe me, I'll leave, yeah, I'll leave you the schedule. Really it's nice in there. the world every week. And all of the three channels that we carry, they're yeah. all here. Right. And you'd be surprised that it's not, you can't say, oh, wow, this probably could be a right-wing gun panel discussion. I, why are we running it? Yeah. Thank you. Our yeah. expert. Well, I'm a media so freak. I read seven papers every day. Yeah. And, I, you know, yeah. and I think that also that's Absolutely. something for the outreach circle to, yeah. to determine, like, what yeah. happens when somebody asks us for a financial yeah. sponsorship? Because obviously that, you know, that could be. It wasn't system. just, no, I mean, and part of what I, the reason I like what you guys said, or you've been very quiet, Zach, but, um, mm -hmm. but was, you know, this your what you do is more important than what you say. And Jen said, this is what we are doing. Yeah. Right. And but your report, I went down and I was like, all right, I know my neighbors. And I was like, they're gonna be like, this is really uh you know, where are we? So the oh, yeah. um and this is also what you do, right? So, so the report, when I read down the report, I was like, this is terrific. And I was like, however, yeah. um, it may make the some people feel left out. So <laughs> is it but is it okay for or a nonprofit to support the things they believe in, right? That's that's the question we're asking. That's a great right? question. Yeah, I think right? that's something that we need to also think that's about because we are, discussion. yeah, we are people, yeah. you know, and that we're running an Absolutely. organization. So we have every, you know, we have by all means, like as we envision what we, you know, want to yeah. be and what we want to say in the world. I think that that's something important. Absolutely. And I'll add too that, like, Anybody is welcome to, you know, engage with us and our services and our resources if they, for some reason, do feel like they're not seen or heard at, at our organization. You know, that's why, just like a library, you know, we want to make it very obvious what we provide and how to contact us, right? Yeah. So, If you are going to be supporting what you believe in and the mission is to be a fourth estate, be, a, you know, a, a voice for all in the community, then... You need to make sure that whoever is what you know that, that your collection of what you all believe well, it's in we, is you're, very Well, you're part as a board member. It it's, it's, you're part of the organization, have, right? And I'm not particularly conservative, but I also really uh, talk to my neighbors a lot. And um, I didn't like standing up in the EC fiber meetings and sending out a document saying there's money missing. That was that did not make me possible. It was popular at all, and it's not really feeling great to be like, hey, where are the guns? <laughs> You know, yeah. like we're the pro guns, but I'm from a neighborhood where that's my community. And there's, you know, that's a big, and, and that community in Vermont, I know because I, you know, see them at the local store. They're like, we have no voice here. You know, Chittenden County is overwhelmingly covering the voting. And it, so that, and that as, as Mike said, we're in a country that's terribly polarized. So. I want to, you know, my, my voice just speaking as one person is to encourage us to take advantage of this unique opportunity that we have to be a credible voice for the entire community and a bridge to be part of the, to, I them to the bridge, to be part of that bridge. Yeah. Uh, is there... 
Carlos, no, you good? Yes, I'm motioning. Um, I, I'm, I'm old okay. business, yeah. any more old business? We can move to new business. Yes. Is there yes. any new business? I think the newest business is, um, I think uh, we we basically built the agenda for September 27th tonight, but we need to actually formalize, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, ass assess the new model, circles, strategic planning. And um, that'll be, we'll be off of the, we won't have to do the financials so we can really nicely right, focus. Right. And then we'll have an, our October meeting. So but the September are, meeting was tucked in. Assess the new model? Oh, what yes. Are we on there? Yes, uh, the uh, nail down the circles and and we'll have all been able to look at the strategic planning tiers that Nathan's offering and uh, make a decision hopefully then as well. If people are get, get themselves up to speed once they get the document. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be, an, and it'll also be what, three days before the annual meeting. So any loose ends there. Yeah. So we basically, it's it's great when you suggested that three month assessment, CJ. I was like, yeah, it's off, it's off our rhythm, but it's actually falling in really nicely with some work we have to do, where we don't have to go through the blah 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 general regular meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can customize this agenda. Yes, I Dave. ran you what's going on at that time, September thirtieth, is the fall festivals of all kinds. Will all be going on here? You know, there'll be yeah, peak foliage and summer, everything. Summers, yep. Yeah, and the uh, foliage festival, Maple Corner Festival, maybe Blue Barn, Barnstock, Magic things. Time of Year. They're all around. That's the prime tourist time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's September really going into right. October. Right, yeah, right. So I just want to remember what it's also it is. election year and inviting um, candidates to come and sing our praises and capture that in a little video Ooh, that's a great for idea. the channel. Yeah, I do like nice. that. Nice. And we are the doing... annual meeting, right? For the open house, yeah, yeah, and it's our first. It's our first open house in our quote unquote new facility, even though we're pretty well settled every <laughs> two years here. Um, so it's it's that's a that's a real nice milestone, and and then to roll out this democratic leadership model, it's just I, I just see us we kind of keep growing into our own in a really nice way. Um, and I'll add too that you know we are in talks with the bridge about doing a candidate forums for the general election. So we'll have more information Great. to share on that. So Great. posting things. And so there'll be stuff happening at the end of September anyway. So maybe we could yeah. tag that to the yep. annual meeting. Yeah. I mean, and Molly Grace, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, with the, the idea of the bridge and, and the, the meeting, uh, the annual meeting and the open house, is it something we might want to consider doing the bridge interview thing ahead of time to like- Buzz out. Uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. promote it. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think it's a little tight because of, you know, we're having a special meeting on 27th and then the... the that's why I'm saying, should, do we need to wait until do a we, special meeting yeah. or should we just... That's a really good question. Like yeah. Do we feel comfortable sort of going public with our, our leadership model prior to that three-month milestone? That, that would that's a great be the question. question. That kind yeah, of basically, it. Yeah. yeah. If, if we want to use that to... In terms to, of bank for the book. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be comfortable with saying that the board has tentatively approved a very unusual uh, co-director model and that at the initial check-in, um, we feel very really positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're moving forward. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. Yeah. So that we could roll that article out and then it could be inclusive of the annual meeting. That's that's really yeah. wise. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you all need to up your pictures. That's right. Um, what do you mean? What do you have you been on the staff page? <laughs> no, I'm not, but why is it looking good or no? Uh, it's okay. I'm witness protection, I can't be on it. Uh, I, mean, yeah. um, I submitted something in 07 or something when I joined the board, but we, we, we should probably should update that. And maybe I a little bio on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's so that that kind of, uh, sorry, it was a kind of a poor decision. I, I asked uh, Mike as our chairman whether we had a current set of uh, sort of curriculum vitae, because we have some new board members. Um, we have a pretty wide- Yeah, I mean, they came in that. as board members were at it. I don't think they're all in one folder somewhere. Mm -hmm. we, we could very easily, a little bio and having a place where um, those are, it's a good thought for the web. Yeah. And for the annual meeting. And just for, yeah, everyone's access. 
Well, we have a zillion reasons. We have newness everywhere, you know, There's new facility. Of, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we have, you know, yeah, no, all it's, these it's things. Five articles. <laughs> well, and if you're trying to rebrand the organization and you know do your outreach the way that you're trying to do it, it to be able to go in and look around and like, hey, it's all there. It gives this great feeling of uh, an organized, uh, solid. Yeah. Yeah. Tradition. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking it's forward to it because when was the last annual meeting? Well, I mean, we basically did it as a PowerPoint. Oh, it was just okay. You so know, it was Chris, a virtual. For that interview for the yeah, bridge, I did get some blurbs. You have some good blurbs from different people. So this is our group. This is what people are saying about us already from the start. Oh, you mean so? Okay, I like you know, that. Have that. Community. for your for your reporter they're going to ask you hey yeah, so you know so send, we, we've assisted the OSSP this is what they said you know all those things that's could I stuff. reach out to you guys over email and just say hey do you have any yeah if, yeah. like yeah. can I get a quote from yeah that's a little we yeah. talk like we yeah. gotta okay. use this I'll follow up with Cassandra yeah, yeah. Right. and or um, we just do the board thing like you know the board has tentatively if you right. want to just do a, a quote yeah. as the board yeah, I think quoting different staff and different board members and community users would, I mean, I bet she knows how to build an article. Right? Yeah, so I mean, we'll, we'll be a resource. We'll offer some things, yeah. 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 Cool. And we could yeah, still yeah, use what John used to use, which is to quad in front of the college for tents uh -huh. for an annual meeting. Because it's peak color season. Uh, yeah, it could be outside. Yeah, yeah and outdoorsy yeah, aspect would be good. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah, we're oh, like yeah, we're yeah, we're gonna wrap we're up at eight minutes after eight. Good luck in your little <laughs> office over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're gonna miss much, but yeah, thanks for getting, getting us time time conscious. Grab some pizza, Chad, to go for the road. Great seeing you, Chad. Appreciate it. <laughs> bye bye. Um, uh, how are we feeling on this new business topic? I think that. That's good. So uh, go ahead, just to be clear, uh, reach back off to Cassandra, say that we're ready to do an yeah. article at her. I hope she can and, highlight the annual meeting as well, which yeah. is the 30th. So we got a lot of work going on. A lot of work going on. What's the cycle of when their paper comes out? Oh, that's a good question because. Oh, is it not? Yeah. Really? You passed the two. I think it's every two weeks. Well, this would fit weeks. within the next one that they're hoping to do. Is the deadline is the second for ads? I know, and it's uh, arts themed. Oh. All arts, it's called. Okay. So it's I timely, feel like we timely for us. I think. Yeah, that's a good time. I mean, we are media art. Jim, did Molly Gray's campaign get back in touch with you? Did you guys do anything for Molly? No, I think so. We didn't. We, so I think um, in terms of the so we reached out for like the the parties at the the primary parties. So that's where we reached out. So the other groups, like I think the candidate forums that we did have, it was those organizations reached out to us and said, "Could you cover us?" Mm -hmm. So the only time that when we reached out was for the primary parties that we're like, "Okay, you know, we didn't have anything covering for primary night." So then we're like, "Well." maybe they're doing something and having speeches or something. So then that was where I think um, I may have misspoke earlier about the forms, but that was where we reached out to all three and said, what's happening? Are you, you know, can we cover something, speeches? And I think only the Democrats reached back or said anything. But was it only Becca or was it Becca and all of those? It was the Vermont, so we reach out to the group. So the Vermont Democrat party is not like individual candidates we reached out to the or like the umbrella organization not event to the yeah. candidates i did okay. check if there was any candidate events and there, there as far as i i couldn't find any so right to see if there's any like oh where I'm, I'm making my public we did capture molly at a vcfa with the uh, candidate yeah because right here it says we covered a variety of primary election candidate forms and events. And I was like, what are they? Including a barnstorming at the State House event with Becca Bellin and Bernie Sanders. So that was why I was like, oh, good oh right. I, I think that one is primarily good. Bernie. Whenever Bernie's yeah, around, we send someone. Yeah. And so it yeah. happened to be because he was that doing was the back engagement. Thing. Good, yeah, good yeah. count. His endorsement good. was key but, for her. But well. just for Orca, the, the, yeah. the video count of how many people watch that. 
Yeah, 90 really cents. That, yeah. yeah, I would say that 90, well, I would say 90% of what we covered were just very traditional, like uh, there was one hosted by rural Vermont, there, and it was just all the candidates at the table, two minutes each, yeah. let's go on the question. So it was like, it was mostly that, I mean, there was one yeah. Yeah. that uh, the Independent Living Association hosted, they were all, yeah, please do. And all, those were all organizations that knew us and reached out to us and asked us to cover. Yeah, so yeah. it was nice to know that we were out there as a resource for everyone to use. So right. I think like the Washington Six and the Washington Five were like the towns were sponsoring or hosting it. And so they, it was, um, so in terms of, we're trying to get us out there to be known as a resource. And so like by mm -hmm. that, they're reaching out and saying, oh, you, you know, can you cover it? it? Like one of the indicators I think we're, thinking of tracking is how many event requests come through the website to have us you know is that number increasing which is what we want yeah is that more people are reaching out to us to say oh you know we cover us we're having we're having this thing or you know we saw so hopefully that part i think our numbers are increasing as more people are reaching out and we tend to go with if they ask us if, and we can we do regardless of you know and we don't really look at what topic is being covered it's just like oh do we have someone who can cover it and yeah. it's in a, in a format that makes sense that it's you know it's not like breakout circles it's more like you know there's a podium right. person talking so and that, if it's in our area and uh, sometimes it's yeah, like it's you know, we're in, doing this in Burlington or Brown yeah 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 but I mean I was going to say we I think the orange was kind of far it was in Rochester so I mean we are yeah trying to like broaden our groups that we reach or that reach out to us so when orange it's like oh yeah well We'll be there. Right, right. And that helps you because remember how long, how much we were trying to find a board member from the Rochester area? And uh, yeah, we're doing all right now. There's no retirements pending that I've heard <laughs> of. Um, yeah. But we may be seeking a board member at some point. Oh, I'm just thinking about the I'm to really work. starting to fade from a very long yeah. day. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Is it the time to make our the first, magic call? It's our first day with kids tomorrow. Yeah. I, I think we um I I could leave the floor open and designate someone else as the adjourner if you guys want to keep going. Yeah, I think I we're going to adjourn it like right now. Okay, yeah, I know. Ready, yeah. Yeah. This is a journey. Good work, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Uh, all right. It's well, 843. You're going to make the call? Uh, yeah, I think I just did. Thanks. Okay.